Hello, I'm Anya and today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I am a little bit late on this tag because it's more than midway through the year at this point, but it is one of my absolute favourite tags to watch and a really great way to catch up and reflect on reading throughout the year, so I really wanted to do it. Question number one was your favourite book of 2020 so far? For me, that has to be Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. In this, we follow Nona, uh, a young girl who, after being accused of murder, joins a convent of assassin nuns. And within this convent goes on a journey, basically, to learn about herself, um, about different assassin techniques and about following the teachings of the ancestor. This in general is just such a fun read. It took me a little bit to get into, but when I did, holy smokes, like just the fun that Nona and her friends bring into this made me so excited. And it did end up becoming my favorite book of the year so far. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year and for me that is oh, Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book of the Stormlight Archive or The Way of Kings as some might better know it. It's pretty clear that Brandon Sanderson is one of my absolute favourite authors and this is probably his most epic series that I've read so far. This is only half of the um second book because they're split into two parts each in the p British paperbacks because each of the books is over a thousand pages long and with it projected to be a 10 book series it's pretty hefty. The world expands a lot within the second book and oh where it's left with where the characters have got to go it's just really exciting and the ante is definitely upped in this as well as the character development and everything that Brandon Sanderson presents is further. You find out just as much as you're left to still question and it's just a very very good sequel. Number three is new release you haven't read yet a bit want to and for me that is The Queen of Nothing by I Holly Black. the paperback editions of the first two books so I didn't want to buy the third until the paperback was available in the UK and that was only recently. And I haven't bo bought books since it did come out, so that's why I haven't gotten to it. But I am very excited about it. The Queen of Nothing is the third and final book in the Cruel Prince trilogy by Holly Black. So it's a finale I'm really very much looking forward to getting to. I have heard a couple of mixed things about it, but my hopes are high and I definitely plan to get to it by the end of the year. The most anticipated release for the second half of 2020 is The Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book to the Stormlight Archive. So once I get myself through Oathbringer and The Rhythm of War comes out on November 17th, I definitely am excited for getting to it. Number five is the most disappointing book so far of 2020. For me, that sadly has to be The Becoming of Noah Shaw by Michelle Hodkin. This is a companion to The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. In this, we follow the perspective of Noah, Mara's love interest in the initial trilogy. The initial trilogy itself had problems with third book where it just was not as well received as the initial two. The story went in a slightly different direction. It was not engaging in the same way it had been. The character's relationship lost a lot of its complexity and it felt very forced. And I did have some hopes going into this, into the becoming of Noah Shaw. That's why I wanted to pick up in the first place, is maybe we would go back to the fun that was present in the first two books of the Mara Dyer trilogy, particularly because it was from the perspective of Noah, who I had a major book crush on when I was younger and first read it, so I was very excited by that. However, Noah's perspective just did not have the same amount of fun. It was actually very dark, but not in a pleasant way and not in a way that not in a way that seemed to serve the story. There was a lot of mentions of 
suicide, of self-harm. And the handling of mental health within this story was not done particularly tastefully or particularly well. And it was majorly off-putting, as was the relationship and the direction it took between Mara and Noah. It just was not what I expected or what I had hoped for. And I don't plan to be continuing on with the series. Number six is The Biggest Surprise, which for me is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I bought this last year, kind of on a whim, because obviously I'd heard a lot about Donna Tartt and I know she's very lauded and the book itself, that and The Secret History have won lots of prizes, everybody's heard of them. And one day I picked up and read the blurb and it said something about the criminal underworld of art and I am a big fan of anything that mentions a criminal underworld. So I picked it up and then it just sat on my shelf for well over a year because I realised I probably wasn't actually that interested in it, particularly because it is a literary fiction whereas I tend to stick to my fantasy and my romances. But upon picking it up, I was very pleasantly surprised about how engaging the story was. It did have slight problems that I expected and that it was a little bit slower paced, but following Theodore Decker and his friend Boris in particular throughout the book and the stories that they went on, the adventures they follow, the absolute shenanigans that they get up to, to be honest, for a book that I expected to be quite hefty and slow and, you know, a little bit pretentious, there was a lot of just the boys sitting around and taking drugs in a way that was actually really amusing and made me enjoy the story a lot. So that's definitely the biggest surprise content wise, but also with how much I actually ended up enjoying the story, not just from a literary appreciation level, but on just personal enjoyment from reading it. Number seven is favourite new to me author. So this can be either a debut author or just an author that I have read for the first time this year. And for me that was Christelle de Boss who is the author of A Winter's Promise. This is the only book I've read so far in this series. I know that the first two are out in English and the third is coming out this year or next year and because they are originally written in French. This series I'd heard a lot of good things about but when I finally picked it up was so much fun. It has a very unique world with a earth that is shattered into spires through which you can travel and I really enjoyed how unique this world was and particularly how they married our technological advancement with fantasy because we still have magic and that in itself I love the story, I love the characters but I particularly loved Christelle the boss's ability to pull all of it together so she is somebody I definitely look forward to reading in the future. Number eight is my newest fictional crush and I have to say although I used to be major on the crushes when I was younger it's not been so much happening in recent years. I actually haven't been reading anything as romance heavy this year. That being said if I had to pick, I would probably go for Matthew Fairchild from Chain of Gold just because he's a lot of fun, there's a lot of development to be had and Cassandra Clare just continues to be able to write really cute boys so I'm here for it. It's why we all read her, let's be honest. Number nine is newest favourite character and that for me has to be Nona Gray, unsurprising as this is my favourite book of the year so far, but Nona herself is just a super interesting character in that there's a lot of darkness to her and everybody enjoys a morally grey character. But as much as she is that, there's also so much goodness and especially in the presentations of friendship and her loyalty, as well as her own cleverness. It's just absolutely lovely to read. And the biggest and probably most important thing is also the mischief that she gets up to and just the amount of fun that we're allowed to have with Nona as she explores this world. Alongside all the dark things that are happening, she's what keeps it fun and really holds the story together. She's gonna be one of my favourite female characters for a long time to come. And the next question is a book that made you cry and I actually have to go with Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This book is 
absolutely action-packed and focuses a lot more on violence and action than it does on emotions, I suppose. But at the same time, packs a real punch. Particularly towards the end, as our char main character, Spenza, is weighed with the choices that she faces and the responsibilities of being a pilot in a time where they're literally fighting for humanity's survival. It got to me. And it was the one book that made me cry. I very much enjoy how well-rounded this book is because it did make me laugh as much as it did make me cry. But it's become a lot rarer to get that physical reaction from me as I read. And there were tears. There were real tears. The next opposite question is a book that made you happy. And while I was considering this question made me realise how dark the things that I've been reading this year are. Because there wasn't anything that I could really look at and think, yes, that made me happy. And it's made me realise I should probably read some more fluffy contemporaries, particularly as it's summertime and it's the best time for it. For this reason, I went with the book that I'm currently reading, so don't know if that quite counts, but we'll go with it. And that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. It's a really fun read so far, especially with the shenanigans that Monty and Percy are getting up to. Their relationship, as it's developing, is really lovely to read. And while Monty is very much in the process of messing all of that up, it has made me smile, especially recounting their friendship and how that itself has developed into the romance and it is just a really heartwarming read and it's making me happy which is why it's the pick for this. Next is the most beautiful book you have bought so far this year and for that I'm actually going to go with the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. So that's The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower and The Winter of the Witch. I just think these covers are really simple but also really gorgeous. They're super understated but still just really classy. I believe this is the UK edition. I think there's a different one in the US but I love these. I think particularly The Winter of the Witch which I haven't read these two yet but I am very excited partly because they're great and partly just because they're gorgeous. The final question is what books do you plan to read by the end of the year? One of the biggest goals for me for 2020 was to get through my longest own TBR. So that is all the way back from 2014 and now I am down to the last three books from 2014. Those being Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs, and The World of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, which is absolutely huge, but it's not that thick. This is more of a companion to the Song of Ice and Fire that goes through the world and the mythology. It's taken me a while to get to this, particularly as Game of Thrones itself obviously didn't have the most satisfactory end. I've had it for a long time and I do think it's going to be an interesting read, so we'll see about it. If there's any of the three that you guys think I should particularly get to first, please let me know because I'm trying to motivate myself as much as I can. And I know especially the first two books, Ready Player One and Miss Peregrines are very lauded and very much beloved, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's me today for the Mid-Year Book Freakout tag. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.